Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for a God who has given us your word. And we thank you that we can trust your word because we trust it from the God who spoke it. Lord, we thank you for your character. And we pray that you might instill in us character and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Over the last couple of weeks, we have been following a series using the acronym of the word CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H. And we have been looking at characteristics that we as people within the church, need to display to the rest of the world. It's our witness of who we are. And all too often in the church, we are more concerned with going to church than we are being the church. In week one, we talked about those first two letters of the word church, C-H, and we talked about contentment and hope. And I pray that you are becoming content knowing that your contentment is found in Jesus. I pray that you have become people of hope and that you're more concerned with showing hope to other people around you. Last week, we talked about unity and rejoicing, and we learned about the power there is in unity, and we need to be united within the church. Uh, We learned about rejoicing, too, how we need to be people of joy, More than any place else on the face of the earth, joy should be seen within the church. And today we're going to look at those final two letters, characteristics that we need to show to the rest of the world, and that is character and healing. We need to be people of character, and the church needs to be a place of healing. So, character. We all have an idea what character is. It is that moral firmness, that integrity that we have, um, that self-control that we have. And But we live in a society where people are more concerned about their image than they are their character. Um, image is what we appear to be to other people. I just want to make sure that everybody thinks I'm this great person. So we want a good image. But character is who we really are when we're alone. Uh, We look at places like Hollywood and even politics, where sometimes character seems to be lacking And it's very easy to point the finger at those people, but you know what? Character needs to be seen within the church. It's very important that the church be a place where people have character, where they're more concerned not about their image, but more concerned about their character. Image says to other people, I want you to like me. But character says to other people, you can trust me. Image is always trying to please other people. Character is more concerned about pleasing God. The Bible is filled with examples of people who had good character or good integrity. And I want to look at a couple of them. Uh, One is from Ruth. And we know the story of uh, that wonderful woman, Ruth, who's... Uh, whose husband died, and she committed herself to Naomi, her mother-in-law, and she says, where you go, I go. Where you know, Your God is going to be my God. And she came, and eventually God blessed her with a new husband, Boaz. And in chapter 3, as she knelt at the feet of Boaz, Boaz says these words to Ruth. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all that you ask. All the people 
of my town, I know, all the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. She was a woman of, she was known as a person who had character. Job. We think of Job and all oh, the sufferings of Job. But one of the things in chapter 2 of Job, after he had lost his family, after he had lost his health, after he had lost all the blessings that God had given to him, when he had nothing left, and uh, God, in one of those confrontations with Satan, he said, God said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And in verse 3, he said, even though he has lost all of this, he still maintains his integrity. Later on in that same chapter, Job's wife, who was getting a little frustrated with the situation, she said to Job, are you going to still hold on to your integrity? And he refused to give up his integrity because he knew how important it was. We need character like that in the church. Comes at a cost. Comes at a cost and it, it doesn't happen overnight. Character is something that you build. Building character is something that takes time. It says in the book of Romans that perseverance produces character. Perseverance, just continuing, steadfast, doing the right thing. It takes time to build up character. But it isn't, isn't it interesting that even though it may take a long time to make, get a good character, you can lose it overnight. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. When I was growing up, my dad used to tell me on more than one occasion in those teenage years, be careful who you hang out with. Because even though your intentions may be good, bad company can corrupt good character. And it's not just evil behavior, but if you hang around doubt and unbelief, and, and it's not that you cut those people off, but who is influencing who here? And if the bad company is influencing you, it's going to rob you of your character. I say all of that to say this. The church needs people with good character. Because when you meet somebody and you learn that they are a person of character, they're nice people to be around. People with a good image may get your attention right away. But people of good character maintain a relationship over a long period of time. Be people of character. Takes time. Second word is healing. The church needs to be a place of healing. I will share with you a couple of scriptures. In Matthew chapter 4, that when Jesus walked on this earth, People were drawn to him. Sick people were just drawn to him wherever he went. And as I read these, these words, Matthew 4, 23 and 24, just try and picture what is happening with Jesus. It says, Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. 
News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. People knew that Jesus was somebody who could bring them healing. And when he walked on this earth, can you imagine that wherever he went, after he, had be, after he had become known and popular, that whenever he came into a village and people said, Jesus is coming, people would bring people out on, on, on stretchers and carry those people and lead those people saying, we just got to get you to Jesus and he can make you well. Wow. That had to be something else. After Jesus ascended into heaven, his church was left with the same message. And it says in Acts chapter 5, just as sick people were drawn to Jesus, sick were also drawn to the church. In Acts chapter 5, at verses 14, it says this, Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. I, I just can't imagine that. Can to try and paint a word picture for you. Imagine what it would be like coming to church this day, and you couldn't get your car into the parking lot because there were too many people <laughs> spread out waiting to come to receive some sort of healing. Now, people would say, well, times have changed. Well, God has not changed. And, and I do believe that uh, God heals us in many different ways. It comes in many different forms. But it all is initiated with prayer when we pray for it. Sometimes he will bring us that healing through doctors and medicine and hospitals. And other times God will just over override all of that and just sovereignly intervene and heal you in such an incredible way that you know it's only God. The greatest advertisement for a healing church, very obviously, is a place where people are healed. So how do we become known? How do we here, Christ the King, Waxahachie. How can this place become known as a place of healing? Let me just throw something out. That it's a place where people get healed. <laughs> and one of the things that we need to do as believers in Jesus Christ is I can't heal. You can't heal. I can't heal a flea. I can't do any of you. There's no man who can heal anybody else. But God can. And what we need to do is to create an environment for that to happen. Number one, to create an environment where people are drawn to, it needs to be a place where Jesus Christ is lifted up. I love the verse when Jesus said that when he himself is lifted up, people will be drawn to him. Sometimes we get things out of focus and we're more concerned with lifting up our congregation than we are lifting up the Lord. It doesn't say lift up your congregation and people will be drawn to your congregation. It says lift up Jesus and people will be drawn to him. Where? Where he is being lifted up. And so to create an environment is for you to just continue to lift up Jesus, not just in church on Sunday mornings, but in your life all week long. When you just lift up Jesus, people will be drawn to that. Number two, uh, 
to create an environment that people are drawn to is that it's a place where people are healed. And I know God has brought healing and answers to prayer to people here. We have some answers in church, answers to prayer sitting in church this morning. Amen? John? Norm? Yes, we got some answers to prayer sitting here today. And that witness carries over to other people. As you get to know people, they say, well, how did you get well? I'm suffering from the same thing. Well, I said, you know, it always helps. It helps when people are praying for you. The church needs to create an environment where it's a safe place. Christ the King Lutheran Church in Waxahachie needs to be known as there is a place that I can feel safe. I don't have it all together yet. And I'm sure you don't either. <laughs> the kingdom of God is when people come together and ha still have their issues. But it's a safe place where I can come in still with my issues and know that I can be loved and accepted and that I can pray to a God who loves me. The church needs to be a hospital for sinners, not a museum for saints. Let me say that again. The church needs to be a hospital for sinners not a museum for saints. So if you want people to be drawn to your congregation, in all likelihood, stay with me here, the people that God is going to draw to your place are those who are sick and in need of healing. Sometimes we want him to draw those good members that we quote are good members to draw them in, but maybe he is drawing the good members. They're just sick and they need healing and they need the love of Christ to come across them. The church needs to be a place where people can say, I don't know if I believe everything they believe, but I know this. I know this guy who went there and they prayed for him and he got better. And if that's all that draws somebody to your church, that's all that God used to draw to people to church in the early days. Church needs people of character. Church needs to be known as a place of healing. As you leave communion today, um, we're going to give you an opportunity to be anointed for healing. It says in the book of James, chapter 5, it's in your bulletin, it's in your bulletin often, if I remember right. It says, is anyone among you sick? Let them call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And it goes on then in the next verse to said, say that a prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. I didn't say that. God said that. And as if you are in need of any sort of healing today, after we have uh, had the opportunity to partake of the body and blood of Jesus and be assured of our own forgiveness, then you can move from that to a place where one of the elders can anoint you with oil for your own healing. What an opportunity. What an opportunity for that to happen. Uh, now, the elders, if you don't know this yet, the elders can't heal anybody either. They're just being obedient to the Lord and if we anoint one another in the name of Jesus, being obedient to his command, he will do the rest. We are just creating an environment where the church can be known as a place of healing. It just makes sense. Now, don't try and overanalyze all this. Just simply, do you need some healing? Then why not ask God to do it 
And the simple prayer offered in faith, anointed in the name of Jesus that the elders offer you today, who knows? Now, this places upon you a responsibility also. Because when God answers your prayer, and I say when and not if, when God should bring an answer to your prayer, you have a responsibility to tell somebody else. Because how is this church going to gain a reputation of being a place of healing if we don't start sharing our stories? I think all of us would be more than happy to share our story with somebody else if God healed us. We have a great God. And I, I just thank God so much because God has used doctors in the medical field so often in my life. If it weren't for them, um, I wouldn't be here today. But God used them to bring forth the healing. But sometimes God can just override it all and just heal you like that. Can you imagine like when they walked, when they laid to Peter by uh, people who were sick by Peter? Peter didn't even pray for them. It says that as Peter walked by, his shadow merely fell on them and they were healed. That blows me away. Sometimes you don't even have to pray. Just do and be where God wants you to be. That's what God wants Christ the King Lutheran Church to become known as. There's a place where people have character. There's a place of healing. There the people are content. There the people have hope. There the people are united. There, people do rejoice. That's what we are to be. That's what God wants to make happen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for a healing God. And Lord, we just pray that today you have started a good work in all of us. And we ask, as Paul said, that you bring, completion, bring to completion that good work that you have started. Lord, today as we kneel at your altar and we are assured of our own forgiveness through the partaking of your body and blood, Lord, we pray also that you might touch somebody and bring them healing even today. We so bold to ask in Jesus' name. Amen.